G'day guys, I'm AT5 here and today I'll be reviewing Sniper Elite Nazi Zombies 1 and 2. So the Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie series is a third person sniping simulator horror title that is a standalone expansion to Sniper Elite V2, which are all developed by Rebellion. And these games are set in an alternate timeline of the end of World War 2 in which Adolf Hitler unleashes a last resort plan to help win the war, and he does this by raising the dead. Imagine that. So you play as one of four heroes to take down the zombie apocalypse, one sniper bullet at a time. And if you're looking for any more plot than that, there isn't. There is absolutely no characterization with the characters, and no voice dialogue either. So you're essentially... no one. This game pretty much just gives you the reason to snipe the undead in World War II. So moving on, so when you really, really think about it, you can imagine the thought of mixing the excellent mechanics of V2 and merge it with zombie slaying action. It actually sounds like an amazing mix. It does, doesn't it? But unfortunately, I didn't think it worked, at least not all of the time. Let's talk about the first game, and then we'll get on to the second game. So let's go through the basic rundown of the game. If you have played V2, you will realise the gameplay is exactly the same, and will start slaying zombies in no time. If you haven't played V2, well, pretty much it's a third-person sniping simulator set in World War II, and you have to deal with real-life sniping mechanics such as bullet drop and wind to pull off perfect shots. V2 also introduced the X-ray bullet time shot, in which you get to watch as your sniper the bullet leaves the barrel and travels towards the target and in graphic detail watch as your bullet shreds through the body breaking bones and organs. Of course there was a lot more variety to it but I don't want to get too much into detail so let's talk about mixing these mechanics with zombie action. The first thing you will notice is that there is not one point within any of these games where you are able to take a slow stealthy approach as zombies just spawn out of the ground and all come slowly pacing towards you in large groups. So the only option you have throughout the entirety of these games is to run, shoot, retreat, shoot, blow something up, retreat, and more shooting. You have to constantly be on the move as you can easily be swarmed by zombies. They may be slow, but once a large horde comes towards you and pins you against the wall, you won't last long at all. So the main problem I have with this kind of gameplay is that the mechanics don't mix well with this kind of gameplay. In V2, it was more about staying in one position, lining up shots one at a time. You could take this more action approach, but it wasn't easy, and that shows in this game. The controls are too stiff, and you feel clumsy when trying to navigate swiftly throughout the environment and enemies. So most of the time, you don't get to use this slow sniping approach, so you'll start using your sidearm and hip firing more than actually sniping, which really defies the point of these games. I mean, sometimes the games do give you long areas to snipe enemies, but most of the time, you'll find yourself swarming and reaching for that sidearm or equipment instead. X-ray bullet time kills are also in these games, but I felt they took away from the fast-paced action that you're supposed to be playing, and it didn't feel like it fit much with this title as compared to the normal games. When it comes to the weapons, every single gun and equipment that was in V2 is also in this game, but there are no new additions to the arsenal which really lets the gunplay down, because most of the weapons really feel the same, so once you find the right set of weapons for you, you tend to stick with them. In return, this makes for a pedestal and dull gameplay which lacks variety as you're just doing the same thing over and over, surviving wave after waves of the undead. And there are also only five enemy types in the first game, and they aren't very inventive. It pretty much comes down to your slow zombies, sprinting suicide zombies, to fast walking skeletons, big slow walking machine gun wielding brutes, and of course undead snipers. So as you can imagine, this game just got quite repetitive, especially since I was playing on my own as well. I didn't know anyone that had these games, and the online searching did not find anything every time I tried, so I was unable to test out the co-op. Which is a shame, because it felt like like that was the big thing about this game, so not being able to test out the main highlight is really not good. <laughs> so let's talk about the look of the game and the level design. I can't help but really compare the looks and sounds of this game to the Call of Duty zombie mode. It looks so similar to those games, and the undead even sound like the zombies from those games, so it really feels like a kind of copy and paste. That's not to say it looks bad, of course. It does have really good lighting and disturbing scenery. But amongst all this destruction, you do often run into a lot of invisible walls and other why-can't-I-go-there moments, which really makes me think that there was not a lot of 
of effort put into the level design. To add to this, the game recycles levels from V2. I constantly kept wandering through these levels and thought to myself, I've been here before, haven't I? Sure, it's an incredibly moody and dark version of it, but it's still the same layout and everything. So I felt as if the first game was lacking passion. It was lacking variety with its enemies and gameplay. And it feels like I was doing the same thing over and over again without any kind of interesting story or progression of any kind to encourage me to keep going. So after my disappointing experience with the first game, I did turn to the second game, and this is where I found a little, little light at the end of the tunnel. Nazi Zombies 2 is essentially exactly the same game. They could put these two games together and it wouldn't make a difference at all. But in this sequel is where I felt the most passion was put into it. So there's still no new weapons and no real story, but there is new undead enemies and also mounted machine gun sections. I loved the new additions to the undead, as they were really interesting and felt creative compared to the lackluster number in the first game. The addition of mounted machine guns may not sound inventive at all, but but at least it was something, but they definitely could have added more variety to the game, because it was still essentially the same old thing, over and over. There is one thing I want to mention, is that the second game at times takes more of a creepy horror vibe in certain levels. It doesn't add to the gameplay or anything, but it was an interesting change to help break up the non-stop action, and I tell you what, mannequins in any horror game are bloody scary. So after my experience with these games, I couldn't help but compare these games to the Left 4 Dead series. The gameplay mechanics might be different, but the action and the setup and the design just felt really similar. Repetitive swarm moments, safe houses throughout the level to reload your weapons, and the fact that both games are definitely boring when playing by yourself compared to when you're playing with friends. I think these games could have been a lot more interesting if they have decided not to go for a Left 4 Dead inspired approach, but stuck to their sniper elite roots. The idea of sneaking around the battlefield, trying to survive the apocalypse one bullet at a time, sounds way more interesting in my opinion. Having the choice to stalk your undead targets and line up that perfect shot, and they still could have had these action moments if they wanted to. It just would have been a lot more fun if they had an idea like this and made it work really well. But in the end, I felt these games didn't really do a lot to impress me, especially the first game. It just felt really slack and a lot of energy wasn't put into this game. I did enjoy the second game more with its new additions, but they were only small additions. I think these games have to be enjoyed with friends to fully realise the game and to find joy in its repetitive gameplay. I went back to the Left 4 Dead series to compare the two, and I found that Left 4 Dead 2 was just built better around the idea, and it was just more fun in general. But then again, when in solo play, it still can be boring at times. So as a complete package and the overall design of the game, I can't help but give it just a 5 out of 10. I just felt like not a lot of effort and ideas were put into the game. That's probably due to the fact that it's a standalone expansion for Sniper Elite, just to cash in on the zombie craze. I had a hard time continuing to play these games, because every time I died I just sort of put down the controller and I was just like, nah. I just couldn't have been bothered doing the same thing again, because it was just repetitive in the first place. In saying this, I'm sure that the game is a lot more enjoyable with friends, so I recommend that you go and play this with friends. And the second game was a lot better than the first game, as it had a bit more variety and gameplay and enemies, but still, altogether, the gameplay and variety in all of these games just fell hard. So did you like Sniper Elite Nazi Zombies 1 and 2? What did you think of these games overall, and do you think they really should just stick with their Sniper Elite roots? And if there's anything you want to ask about the games, remember to leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And if you like this review and you want to see more, remember to like me on Facebook or subscribe to me on YouTube if you want to see more. Alright guys, thanks for watching my review of Sniper Elite Nazi Zombies 1 and 2. I hope you enjoy slaying the undead in this game or another game. But anyways, MA25 is bloody out of here.